Fabrizio's views are explicit. It disturbs me to think that in the future the Italian race will become mixed like it is in England. You know, it disturbs me. It's unbelievable. You go to Lazio and hear the fans making all these noises. I don't know how many of them do it, but it's unbelievable. The French international Lillian Turam was playing in Italy for Parma when he refused to transfer to Lazio because of their fans. In a sign of their power, the Irdu Shibali went to meet him. I think they scared Turam actually more than anything else by, uh, by managing to, to book an appointment with a, you know, a, a major Serie A player and, and wander into the training gra ground as a kind of uh, representatives of some major Roman power. Yes, even this was very strange. I never understood how they actually got in. In Italy, the fans are very powerful, and I really don't understand it. Yeah, yeah, we went to him and he said, of course you can join Lazio. You know, we've got a black player in the youth team, we get on fine with him. No, come on. How could I go and play for Lazio knowing what they're like? It'd be impossible. In Italy, the link between politics and the football hooligans has a darker side. When you go around Rome, I think something that, that would shock people who haven't been here is how much uh, extremist graffiti there is. But the curious thing about all this is, is that 80% of the time, to put a rough figure on it, those right-wing symbols are coming in football context. Like you see a piece of graffiti about Roma or about Lazio, and it'll be accompanied by by the Celtic cross or by the swastika. Lazio's Irudushibili have always had links to the far right. Italy's hooligan groups were heavily influenced by the war between left and right wing terrorists in the 70s and 80s. You had mm, groups like uh, Milan, Bologna, uh, Firenze, uh, which were, mm, which belonged to the uh, left wing movement and groups like Verona, Inter, uh, Lazio, which belong to the uh, right wing movement. This terrorist was once full of our right wing comrades. Many of them died fighting for the cause in the streets and against the police. Every Sunday you'd see them here on the North Terrace. They have their faces covered with scarves, supporting Lazio. Some still come to the game. I guess they're lucky to have found in us a new generation willing to carry on the work. Given that history, the game between Atalanta and Lazio is a high-risk one for the ultras. Atalanta's hooligans are traditionally left-wing, and the game is prone to violence. The police in Rome try and keep the numbers of Lazio fans down by stopping those without tickets from boarding. Lazio's Irudu Shibili have other ideas. They stop the train, allowing the others to board. They have an eight-hour journey to the Atalanta match in the northern town of Bergamo. Old political rivalries have forged friendships beyond Italy. On board is a Chelsea hooligan and far-right activist. I've been coming out for uh, too many years. Um, through connections I made in, well, friends of mine and I made in uh, London, uh, through, at the time, the British movement and the National Front, and um, I've been coming since. Yeah, basically it's a fascist thing. On the train, too, a militants from the extreme right-wing group, Forza Nuova, the Italian National Front. They've been trying to recruit from the Lazio terraces. Uh, 
Certo, c'è la Lazio. Certo, la Lazio. Lui è di Forza Nuova. Forza Nuova, ci sono stati... Yeah, we know people from Forza Nuova. We have good relationships with them on a, on a friendship level. But our power is the power of the Iriducibli and nobody else's.